Should you turn off your nose at someone? Sharon Horn Els from here. Today, our idiom is turn up your nose at someone. And even back in the 1500s, people were using a haughty, uh, judgmental, snooty attitude and behavior, which often included turning up your nose at someone to indicate that something wasn't good enough for them or that they were above a certain person or a certain situation, usually a person, usually that expression and that nonverbal behavior, which is very aggressive, is used to indicate to somebody that they're lowly and that they're not good enough for you to even consider or spend your time with. Um, back in, in those days, there were definitely houses of, of hierarchy, right, within each household and village and um, area, there were you know, literally hierarchies, people that had different ranks in society that looked down upon and looked up their nose or um, disregarded people of other classes and other, um, usually socioeconomic or occupations, right? We were judged by our occupations back then. I guess I wasn't alive, so I wasn't, but you get the meaning. So to regard someone or to regard something with haughtiness or to be snooty or judgmental about it, it's, it's been with us for hundreds and hundreds of years, right? That behavior, that judging. We judge everything, whether we, whether we want to or not. It's tied into our egos. It's wired into our human beingness that we judge and question everything that we encounter. And it, we can do that but because we are going to do it no matter what. It's automatic. But we can do it in a way that is kind and respectful and values every human being, right? Now, you're going to get a couple of my beliefs here because I, I have a hard time doing any kind of video or any kind of a, a presentation-y thing without sharing my opinion and what I feel. It's, that's human nature too. We tend to share and emphasize the things that we think are important. And one of my core beliefs is that all human beings are infinite beings, right? My humble opinion, we're all amazing, infinite, incredible, infinitely valuable just in the fact that we're human beings. And to treat other people in a way that disrespects or disregards or is rude or um, in some way makes you think that you're better than them drives me nuts. It drives me up a tree. I have people in my life still, because they're my relatives, that <clears throat> have this entitled mentality and they honestly believe that they are better than everyone else and that everybody else on the planet should kowtow to them, should you know kiss their feet and should um, treat them as if they're royalty. Now, <laughs> I, it just makes me laugh because they're, they're ordinary people, right? They're just like everybody else, but they think and they've taken on this air and this belief about themselves that they are far superior to all of the human beings. And were they not my relatives, I wouldn't spend any time with them at all. They would not be anybody that I would ever even talk to or associate with based on their behavior and how they treat other people. Yet. There's people like that who come in and out of our lives, and I think they come in and out of our lives for a reason, to show us that we should treat other people the way we want to be treated. And you know what? They can treat people the way they want, and they'll get the results based on that behavior for their life. I'm going to treat people the way I choose fits with my core values and my beliefs, and I'll have the people in my life that, that are right for me. And that's okay, right? Because we're all different. We all want different things. Some people feel better about themselves, which I, I tend to, to believe that they're living in their ego and they're not very personally or spiritually developed. Personal judgmental opinion here. Warning, warning. <laughs> but that's, that's my beliefs. My beliefs about people is the more you love yourself, the more spiritually and, and personally developed you are and the more work you've done on yourself, discovering who you really are, the less you judge other people and the less judgmental you are of other people. Love to know what other people think of that and if that's been your experience or or not. But that's been my experiences because I know when I was younger, I was freaking horrible. I was arrogant and egotistical and it was my way or the highway. I was right about everything. And as life knocked me down along the way, I learned the lessons. And as people came into my life, that were way worse than me. I couldn't believe it back then, but they were worse than me. They knocked me down and that taught me that, oh, that doesn't feel good to me. Behaving that way, treating other people as if um, I'm, di well, we're all different, right? But if I'm better than them in any way, shape or form, feels wrong to me, so I'm not gonna do that. And that's 
comes into our life, all kinds of lessons and all kinds of experiences come into each of our lives differently based on the lessons that we individually need to learn. And I suspect that some of those people, and there's probably a lot of those people right now during this pandemic, they're getting a huge wake up call. People that are huge influencers, people that are famous because of their athletic ability, their uh, music ability, their uh, ability to entertain actors and actresses, people that aren't getting together at events and award shows and things. I suspect that people that are living very strongly in their egos are taking huge hits right now. Business owners that have never been challenged or never had adversity before are, are in for a huge wake up call and a huge growth experience through this pandemic. And we can look at it as a huge growth experience or we can shut down and we can we can crawl in a corner and we can fall to our knees and we can we can feel that we're victims and we can give up. And, and should we choose to do that, we will lose our businesses. There are people that will lose their businesses during this time. There are people that will thrive and explode during this time. And, and we're seeing it every day. I'm seeing it every single day. Um, there are people that have lost their jobs that will uh, sit at home and wait for the government and the vast majority of people will be sitting and waiting for the world to change back to the way it was. I would be willing to, to wager that 80% of the people of the two thirds or so of the population that is currently in quarantine or, or at home or shut down, 80% of those people are just waiting for it to get and be over. They're watching the news. They're, they're, they're just reacting to everything that's going on and they're waiting for, for things to go back. They're waiting for their businesses to reopen and they think everything will be the same and they'll go back to normal. They're normal. Um, and then 20% of the people are saying, all right, you know, this, this, this is terrible and it, it happened. There's nothing I can do about it. What can I do? What am I going to do? What can I look at? What can I think about? What can I learn? Do I even want to go back to the way things were before? Because 80% of the people, of 100% of the people, were probably miserable in their jobs, right? I've worked in jobs where I was absolutely positively miserable, but I went there every single day because I thought it was the, what I had to do, what I should do to be a good person and take care of my family. And I did that for, for a couple of decades, right? And we do that. Sometimes people do that their entire lives. But this is a huge global opportunity for us to say, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do what's right for me and my family. It's up to each and every one of us to take care of our own personal economy and our own business economy. It is 100% up to us and our responsibility to decide and determine and then to take steps to make sure our businesses survive or not. Whether your business survives or not, I don't care what business you're in, what industry you're in, is 100% entirely up to you. Will you have to do things differently? I'm going to tell you, yeah, every single business, whether they're running or not, is having to do things differently right now. So if you've been somebody that's been stoic and never wanted to change, you're in for a rude awakening. We are all on a global basis changing simultaneously. So none of us are in a position to turn our nose up at anyone else. We don't want to turn our nose up at our customers. <clears throat> now is the time to be trying to find ways and contacting and serving your customers better than you ever have. If you've never paid attention to your customers, don't ignore them now because guess what? When it's time for you to do what you usually do again, you're not going to have any customers. I, I, I almost guarantee it. Unless you have some kind of a commodity that, or a thing that people absolutely positively have to have, like electricity or water or something, and our utility, you're going to be in very big trouble. And those businesses are still running, right? So that's it. That's my little uh, diatribe on turning your nose up at someone today. And of course, a huge dose of my own personal opinions and prejudice on how we should treat other people, um, especially if we want to survive this. And I say, give as much value as you can. Um, do what you can to help other people at every opportunity. Treat people the way you want to be treated and, and you will be fine. You will shake out of this just like all of the rest of us who will come out pretty much unscathed. There's some of us, you guys, I'm not very, I'm not very hurt by this transition period. I kind of feel like everybody's going through what I've had to go through for the last two years. And maybe from a selfish standpoint, that's, um, there's some gratitude in that. I know that no matter what happens, we'll figure it out. Have an amazing day. I will of course be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you apply it to your life right now? If I can help you in any way, ask in the comments below. 
or if there's an idiom you'd like to know the meaning of and the history of, ask that too. Share in the comments below. Have a great day and I will be with you tomorrow. Bye.